What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and it's time for week 4 of the LBA. Now if you didn't watch the matchup video, of course I did upload that before this, so feel free to go check it out. I'll, um, of course it'll be included in the playlist as well. If uh, you have watched it, you'll notice from the team preview that my opponent here definitely did not bring what I expected him to bring. Um, I was, I don't know, I just, I, I kind of saw the slow bro Latios, or Latios, excuse me, Nidoking coming. I definitely thought he was going to go Conkledure over Hitmonlee. And I didn't expect to see uh, Chandelure. So he does have um, a few things weak to my Weavile. But going into this, I figured that either the Nidoking or the Chandelure was scarfed. And you can see from my team that the uh, the Weavile Togekiss Venusaur Core, of course, that I pretty much am going to bring to every battle. Unless just someone brings something that's super threatening to Mega Venusaur. Uh, but Togekiss Mesprit Donphan is not a bad matchup for basically anything that he has. I just need to watch out for letting Kingdra set up. And he can't really spam Draco Meteor with his two dragons as long as I have Togekiss. So I can't let Togekiss go down either. Uh, also, as long as I keep Venusaur healthy, it can completely take on uh, his Hitmonlee and his Slowbro pretty easily. I just have to keep it above about 70% health. And then Synthesis can help out with that. Now on the lead out here, I actually expected him to lead out with either Nidoking or Chandelure. But he leads out with Slowbro. Definitely didn't see that coming, so I don't get a chance to set up my Stealth Rocks right away. I go out into Mesprit hoping that I don't get burned. This is actually the one that I caught in the game just uh, a few days ago, actually. <laughs> so definitely a good catch on that one. I got a pretty good IV spread and a great nature. So I'm going to end up here just going for Shadow Ball just to see how much damage it does. This one is a little bit more bulky, but it has a lot of speed. And I actually get the Special Defense drop, and I use Future Sight. I figured he would switch out because the Shadow Ball and the Future Sight is definitely going to be enough to knock him out with minus one Special Defense if he stays in. So I really thought he was going to switch out, and he stays in and scalds even though he paralyzed me. So I, while I thought he was going to maybe switch out into... Um, uh, Kingdra or maybe uh, Hitmonlee or something to, to try to play around the Shadow Ball. He just stays in. So that sucks because I could have just KO'd him. I don't know if he predicted me to just go for a Thunder Wave or not. I didn't use it, so I don't know how he could have seen the Thunder Wave coming. But and then on the Switch, I definitely went for Future Side on the Switch, expecting him to switch right there. And I got paralyzed, which means that this thing gets an opportunity to Dragon Dance. And since I was paralyzed, now I'm going to go for Thunder Wave. And unfortunately for me, he actually has the Lumberry. So he's healed of the Paralysis. I don't get any future side damage on him. And he gets plus one attack, plus one speed. That was just a pretty horrible turn of events. If I had at least gotten the future side off, that with my investment would have done around 70% HP to him. And then he would not have felt comfortable here going for another Dragon Dance. And he definitely would not have lived this Dazzling Gleam from Mr. Iwata, the Togekiss. Uh, of course, I bred this Togekiss on the same day that it was announced that Mr. Iwata died. Uh, so, that's why I named it that. Plus, he, he... Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was invocative. But anyways, though, Togekiss does manage to hold on, even though that was a plus two waterfall. Or, I'm sorry, a plus two iron head, excuse me. And I was... I really didn't have anything that I wanted to switch into Nidoking. Because Mega Venusaur is not Mega Evolved yet. I could have gone on the Dawn Fan, but I didn't know that he wouldn't go for Ice Beam just because... My uh, Venusaur is not Mega Evolved yet. I'm going to use the opportunity to go for Stealth Rock. I was really hoping for a Paralysis here. I didn't want to get hit by Scald. I didn't want to get burned. I just really wanted to put some damage on him. And I needed something to go in my in my favor. Unfortunately, he doesn't get burned. I mean, he doesn't get paral paralyzed. And he's able to hit me with an Ice Beam. It's a good thing I didn't switch out at least. Um, he does switch out, and I was afraid that he would do that. But I figured if he went out into Latios... I could just Ice Shard it to put it in range of my uh, Weavile's Ice Shard. So even if he did switch out, that wasn't too big of a deal. Um, that would only be a big deal, of course, if he had Recover. But forcing him to go for Draco Meteor here, well, not really forcing, because Togekiss is no longer around, so he doesn't really have anything to lose from it. Uh, I do notice that he is Life Warp, so that means that I can definitely outspeed him with Sinchino or Weavile. He's just going to switch out. He's going to go back out in the Chandelure, and I'm going to use this as an opportunity to just U-turn. I didn't really have any reason to go for uh, Tail Slap right there because number one, he had Chandelure in the back, and number two, if he brought in um, either Hitmonlee or, 
or uh, Nidoking afterwards, I wouldn't necessarily KO him, only he can KO me back with the uh, Mach Punch if he has it. Now right there, since I, I just kind of called his bluff, I didn't think he'd bring two Scarfers to the battle, so I went ahead and went for a knockoff. Here we're going to switch on into Venusaur, knowing that I can take anything that Himali wants to go for. But unfortunately for me, he gets a critical hit. Uh, and as you see from the critical hit damage, if he hadn't got a critical hit, that wouldn't have even done 75% damage. So I'm going to Mega Evolve here, go for Giga Drain. I'm trying to get some HP back. I really should have gone for Synthesis. But um, I did think that Giga Drain plus Stealth Rocks would have been enough to KO Latios if he decided to switch. And that was a miscalculation because he barely lives and he's able to go for a Draco Meteor. And he knocks me out. So it's unfortunate as since if he had not gotten that critical hit, I definitely would have lived that hit. It would have done around uh, 50 to 60%. So that's unfortunate, but that is part of it. I'm gonna go out in the since you know here, go for the expert belted bullet seed and summarily be pretty impressed at knocking out the slow bro. Finally, this thing could have been gone at the beginning of the battle, but I completely over predicted in the beginning of the battle. So that sucks. Uh, he's going to go on an Anita King whom I know is scarfed at this point. Uh, just to confirm it, he outspeeds Sinchino, hits me with a sludge wave, and I live, and I knew I could live it because I calculated it beforehand, but I missed the tail slap. And I guess I should have just gone for a uh, bullet seed for insured damage, but tail slap had a chance to KO. It, it had a very small chance to KO. It would have done 94 to I think 108%, but I had the chance for it. So if I had hit the tail slap, not only would Nidoking would have gone down, but then he would not have been able to go out into Hitmonlee and go for Fake Out to take out my Weavile. Furthermore, he would have been forced into going for Mock Punch, uh, and then at that point, Mock Punch is actually not a one-hit KO against Sinchino. It, uh, so it, it's, well, at that at that point, of course, it's, it's a one-hit KO on Sinchino just because of how low Sinchino's HP is, but if it's at full health, it's not a one-hit KO necessarily. Uh, especially without the Iron Fist boost that Hitmonchan normally gets. And uh, Mach Punch would have KO'd Weavile, but then I would have at least had the chance to hit it with an Ice Shard um, and put some damage on it that way. So I think I played that game okay. I I really should not have overpredicted against Slowbro. I really think that would have changed how the match went overall. But as far as the hacks goes, that's definitely just part of Pokemon. That was super unfortunate. I don't, I don't think that I necessarily deserve that loss, but uh, it's the loss that I don't deserve, but it's the loss that I have. So we'll be going forward from this point with a three and one record. Um, at least I was able to get the differential down to just one at the very least, so he won't get too many differential points. And I don't lose very many either. Um, and then next week we're going up against the Seattle Sandrews, which I believe that that team is still undefeated at this point. And he is packing a very powerful team draft. So, no uh, no saddened faces here. We're going to go into that looking high. And we're going to come off this loss and bounce back for a victory. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great day. And shout-outs to D-Train for recording this battle for me. Later, guys.